Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about a great abstract algebra book. This book is fantastic. It is the Frelay book. It's called A First Course in Abstract Algebra, written by John B. Frelay. Uh, this is a fantastic book. I've used this for self-study. I have read big chunks of this book. I have actually done problems from this book. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Frelay's writing and his writing style. Let's talk more about this book. The contents of this book are pretty standard. So he talks about some preliminaries, and we'll talk more about those uh, in a minute. Uh, binary operations, groups, goes on to subgroups, then permutations, and then permutations part two. Note for Lay, if I recall correctly, does the um, cycle multiplication backwards. So he does it like Wolfram Alpha does it, which is the non-standard way, right? Um, so he doesn't do it the way uh, most other books do it. Neither does Wolfram Alpha. Then he goes on to cyclic groups, isomorphism, uh, direct products, and then finally generated abelian groups. Talks about some more specific groups in geometry and analysis. Groups of cosets, normal subgroups and factor groups, homomorphisms, series of groups. I remember... Um, after I used this book for self-study, I remember going back to this book while in grad school to reference information on series of groups, because that's not something that is always found uh, in all abstract algebra textbooks. Group actions. It's kind of nice. Applications of G-sets to counting. Cool stuff. And it just keeps going. Celo theorems. Applications of the Celo theory. Free abelian groups free groups, group presentations. Then Frelay goes on to rings and fields. We have rings, integral domains, some non-commutative examples, the field of quotients of an integral domain. Then he goes on to quotient rings and ideals, homomorphisms of rings, rings of polynomials, lots of chapters, right? Tons of stuff in this book. And then UFDs, PIDs, so many chapters. I mean, he just keeps going, right? Just on and on and on. Vector spaces, further algebraic structures, algebraic extensions, some geometric constructions, automorphisms of fields. Now, the sections are quite small, which is very nice. It makes you feel like you're getting through the book. Um, you don't spend forever on any particular section, usually. They're really small sections. I mean, look, finite field starts at 403, and then Galois theory starts at page 409, right? And then illustrations at 420, and then 429. So you see it goes through quite quickly. The final chapter is on the insolvability of the Quintic. So the book reads uh, extremely well. This is an extremely good book. It is uh, amazing. Um, great abstract algebra books, one of my favorites. That's why I used it for self-study, right? I had a couple abstract algebra books, and this is one of the books that I used for self-study. I enjoyed this book. I enjoyed reading it. Uh, it's very well written. Uh, some things are a bit non-standard. In fact, I just openly, randomly opened this page, and, and notice here, it says, it remains for us to now prove that G is isomorphic to this group G prime. So they define a function, and look how he does the uh, function definition, right? He puts the A there, on the left, and the phi or the phi on the right. So it's just a little bit uh, non-standard uh, from other books. That kind of agrees with what I was saying about his um, multiplication of cycles. So that is one downside of the book, that some things are done in a bit of a non-standard way. But I suppose it's good to see uh, both the standard and the non-standard approaches. The exercises in this book are the right level of difficulty, uh, but usually not too difficult. If you read the section and you actually understand it and you take notes, um, you should be able to do most, if not all, of the problems. I mean, you're going to run into situations where you, know, you can't do most of the questions or there's a few you can't do, but that's normal. That's part of mathematics. Um, but otherwise, I would say the, the exercises are the right level of difficulty for the textbook, which is an excellent textbook. I cannot emphasize... Uh, how good this book is. Again, there are some flaws, as I mentioned, with the non-standardness, but 
Otherwise, uh, the exercises and the readability make this book uh, awesome. Furlay does include answers to some of the exercises, not all. Um, and there are really no answers to the proofs. Sometimes he does give hints, so I guess that is better than nothing. So there are some solutions to some of the exercises. Again, the book is A First Course in Abstract Algebra, written by John B. Furlay. Uh, it's a really good book. That's it.